In the middle of February, on the one day that we've been hit by a storm known as Doris. So, uh, yeah, perfectly timed to uh, drop the roof on this, but it is what it is. Uh, and if, if anything, it'll be a laugh doing it in 90 mile an hour headwinds. Good times. Anyway, this is a car that I've been meaning to get hold of for quite a while. I had the incredibly fortunate experience of being able to drive the Rolls-Royce Ghost Black Badge. Uh, that was just before the Goodwood Festival of Speed last year. And when I was in that, that car, I was pleasantly surprised by how dynamic it was. Now, don't get me wrong, that was the Black Badge. And as the name suggests, it was mildly pimped compared to your standard roller. Now, the Dawn is based on the Wraith architecture. So this does actually have the engine in it from the Wraith. It is the same 6.6 .6 litre V12. However, because the ethos of the Dawn is a little bit more chilled, a little bit more cross-continental cruiser roof down, the engine is actually detuned somewhat. So the Wraith is running 624 brake horsepower. Incredible. <laughs> uh, whereas the Dawn is pushing out 563. So needless to say, it's not hanging around, but it is of the ethos that it's designed to chill a bit more. You are floating, wafting along on a bed of air, and I'm here today to experience what it's like. Truth be told, I am this year shopping for new cars. Now, I'm not saying that the Dawn is going to be it, but it is new car year. There are some new cars coming, but I thought, you know what? This is the kind of vehicle that I've never owned. I've had very small amount of time in a Rolls Royce and my first flavor of the occasion was very enjoyable indeed. So I thought, you know what? We do have summer coming up. There's some road trips happening and I am partial to a bit of top-down action. So let's check out what this thing's all about and hit the beautiful, windy, blistery roads of the UK. LT. Stepping out of that into this is like stepping out of a go-kart into a truck. <laughs> it's a, you forget. When you see these things on the road, okay, you're aware that they have road presence and they're a big car. It's not until you're in it that you are piloting a road yacht. Its proportions are colossal. And even its ride height, now it doesn't look like an SUV, but when you're passing conventionally normal cars, you're all like, yeah, I say, I say, how goes it down there, sir? And you sort of, yeah, you sort of tower over them. You're a jolly good chill, chap. You assume this very chilled demeanor. You get in it, and if I could just take your attention for one minute and just listen. Exactly. Nothing. It is so beautifully tranquil in here. This is running a 6.6 liter V12 petrol engine. And when I started it up, I wasn't aware that it had started up. That's not a bad thing. That's what's known as ultimate luxury. It is so subliminally quiet. You get in it, and right now, I'll plant my foot a bit. You're aware it's pulling, and by the way, it pulls. Um, but it still wafts along in relative silence. It just gives you a nod that, yes, you are unleashing all 563 brake horsepower, sir. And here's some torque to massage it. And of course, unlike the supercars that I spend most of my time in, the power delivery in this is like they've packaged up all of those horsepowers, sent them to finishing school, and repackaged them with eloquence. So when you depress your right foot, Yes, you're very aware that it is surging on, but it masks and disguises its power 
with this undertone of sophistication that I've honestly not felt in anything else. I always thought that a sense of occasion from a car mostly came from the sound, the sheer brute acceleration, its grip, its handling. As you've quite readily seen, I am very happy for regular pedestrians to drive past me as I waft along in my cloud of bliss. Because when you're in this going slowly, it's still an amazing sense of occasion. That Range Rover there, for example, I would normally class as a car that I would drive steadily. Right now, I am the slowest car on the road and I reckon I'm having the best time. <laughs> and that brings us to the main point of this car. The fact that you can take the roof off. <laughs> now, earlier on I was re referring to this car as a road yacht. But when this happens, it is game-changingly awesome. And behold, this vast cave of legroom that is the rear of the dawn. Let's hit it. <laughs> Game changed. Now, don't get me wrong, driving bright colored supercars, I'm fairly used to being looked at and potentially judged. But in three degrees, in the middle of a nationwide storm, people are probably looking at me thinking, what up? that it is four-seater, which means when you're balling about with your mates, they can all come along. There's nothing like the camaraderie of a bunch of you in an awesome car, drop top down. So straight away, I have to say that this thing, even though it's, you know, the least dynamic version of what Rolls offer, uh, I'm sure at some stage they'll do a, a black badge version of the Dawn, which might be more my thing, but I am incredibly pleasantly surprised with just every turn of the wheel of this thing as well I'm analyzing just to see how plush it is and you're going over potholes and ruts and bumps it just glides over them it's, it's almost as if they aren't there earlier on by accident I went over a uh, speed bump a little bit too quickly it was like it wasn't there I just sort of skipped over it and I thought what's that a speed bump just an amazing setup so complete opposite from what I'm used to it's still fantastically baller <laughs> um, I'm not sure if the drophead dawn is right for, for England then maybe it's just a case of doing a season in it potentially in Europe I believe I can put the roof up on this while I'm doing around 30 miles an hour so let's let's try that yes things are happening the roof Pretty, it's fairly quick. So if it was raining, there it is. Also, you guys might have picked up that I have never owned a Spider, a convertible. I've never really been interested in them. And funnily enough, that was actually when I was younger. As I'm growing up, I'm not sure it's because I missed out or again, I'm looking to expand my sort of driving experiences. Um, but back in 2008, 11 i did the gumball rally in a bentley continental convertible and when i approached that car i was like yeah it's not really me but you know gumball and it's cool after doing that rally for a week the sense of occasion that it adds to a car by taking off the roof connecting your head with the sky it's such a beautiful thing and it really adds to your whole driving experience now i'm not sure if i should be looking for something like this where I'm chilling and just taking in the view or do I want to connect myself with the visceral experience like I had in the uh, 675 LT back in Tenerife last year well I think it's up to me to do a few more test drives in various things to see what's what and I'm also aware that there are a few convertibles launching this year which I might hold out for so let's see anyway guys as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.